What's up guys, I'm Jesse from Mullen The Maker and today we are going over five ways you can accurately cut a cross cut. If you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do that and subscribe below for more content. We're doing a lot of projects this summer, so make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for those. Now I get this question all the time on how I accurately cross cut lumber. Now, I am not super precise, I don't do hand tools, so maybe my precision is gonna be a little off from somebody that's being extremely accurate making chairs or whatever. But we're gonna go through the five ways I accurately cross cut lumber. So let's get into it. Now I'm using my Woodpecker's 1281 square today to uh, be consistent across every cross cut method. Now I'm using plywood as well. Uh, it's already cut just some scrap plywood that's pretty much squared off. And so we're gonna use that to do our test cuts. Now the first way I accurately cut a cross cut is my miter saw. It is a very simple tool. It obviously, that's exactly what it's made to do is cross cut lumber. Now the issue with miter saws is it can be pretty inaccurate um, depending on what kind of miter saw you have and how you have it adjusted and you may have to adjust it a lot. So let's go through some of that. Now I marked a line on my plywood. So then I took it over to my miter saw and made a cut. Now this miter saw is pretty awesome because it comes with a shadow line. Now there's a few different brands that have the shadow line feature, but my Delta Cruiser has that so you can actually see exactly where that uh, blade is going to cut every single time. Now this helps a lot. Uh, the laser on a lot of different ones can be knocked off, be inaccurate, so I really like the shadow line feature. Now as I cut my first one, I used my square to see how accurate it was. Now as you can see, it was pretty off. There is a pretty decent gap on the top, so I need to adjust it. It's a good thing about the miter saw, especially this Delta Cruiser, is that you can adjust it easily, move it, lock it down in place, and try it again. So after that first cut and seeing that it was inaccurate, I took my square over to the fence of the miter saw, was able to line that up and then adjust my saw blade accordingly to make sure it was completely square. I made that second cut and it was pretty dang square. Now the issue is with a miter saw, especially a compound miter saw, and as you can see on my Delta Cruiser, if I start to move side to side, you will see that blade move, which will make it so it's out of square. So as you cut on your miter saw, you need to make sure you have a consistent pattern um, with your movement so that it cuts completely square every time and that can be hard. But for basic lumber, for whether you're doing projects outside or you don't need to be a extremely accurate, a miter saw is a great way to go. Let's move on to the second option, which would be the miter gauge on your table saw. Now you can't do this with a lot of stuff, especially big heavy lumber, you wanna use your miter saw, but smaller, uh, lumber you can definitely use on your table saw and this miter gauge gives you that ability. Now this is the miter gauge that I will be using. This one came with the table saw. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot to it. Uh, you can adjust it for different angles. It goes into the miter slot and you know, it does have some good capabilities, especially when you're first starting out. Now as I made the first cut and tested it with the woodpecker square, you can see that it is off. So I did try to adjust it and, and cut again, and as I cut again, the second one was still off. It's really hard to hone these in perfectly. They do have some set screws that you can really try to go back and forth and make sure that it's as square as possible. But there's other issues as well, as in when it's in the miter slot, it actually has some play back and forth, which means that as you're pushing it, if you lean it one way or the other, it's gonna give you a slightly off so you can't get perfectly square. So no matter how much you play with this miter gauge, you might always be off, which that's when an Incra 1000 or an upgraded miter gauge is really gonna help you. Now the Incra 1000 has a ton of different features, including these set screws and plastic rings. Now as you tighten these down, these rings will expand and that means you can tighten them down in the miter gauge. Now that will make it so there's no play back and forth, but you can still keep it loose enough that it is a smooth uh, movement as you move your gauge through that slot. Some other cool features on the Incra as well is that there's a stop, so you can adjust the stop to make repeated cuts. There's also a measuring tape on the top so you can 
uh, hone that in and so you can always have the same cut and easily transition where that stop is. There's also a micro adjust feature which it makes it easy to hone in exactly what angle you want, including a perfect cross cut. Now, as I made the first cut, it was slightly off. I haven't adjusted this to make sure it was perfect in a long time. So I had to micro adjust it, tighten it down and make a several cuts. After two cuts, I honed it in perfectly and I did a few more and they were perfect every time. Now the upgraded miter gauge is a good option, especially if you don't have a lot of room to store uh, big sleds or anything like that. This is a great option for you. You can store it right on your table saw. You can just pick it up, use it whenever you need. Plus the micro adjust makes it really easy to get whatever angle you need. Now the next one is one I use all the time and that is my Rockler table saw sled. This is an easy option because you just buy it. Um, it. It can be honed in really easily and it's pretty much ready to go right out of the box. Now this Rockler table saw sled goes right in the miter slot, has a miter bar underneath. You can use some paste wax to really help that movement across your table saw. You can adjust it with a set screw uh, to make sure if it is a little off, you can set that set screw, reclamp that down, and you can redo your cut and to get it exactly where you need it to be for your table saw. Now I use this table saw sled all the time, so it was already at a perfect cross cut. I didn't have to adjust the set screw. The first time we cut it, my woodpecker squared showed it that it was pretty much perfect and it, it's just super accurate. The good thing is too, if you need to do a 45 degree cut, you can adjust this fence to lock it down into the 45. You can then run your piece through and now you have a perfect 45, whether you're doing picture frames or anything like that. There's a lot of functionality to this sled, including a, you can buy an additional tabletop for the other side of your saw blade. So now this is nice if you're cutting dowels or small things and you're doing a lot of repeated cuts. It makes it really easy just to do that so it doesn't catch in your blade. Now I've used this a lot making dowels, whether it's for bookcases or, or um, end tables and you didn't want to use pocket holes, I use dowels all the time. Now this extra top that fits inside the miter slot on the other side of the blade is coming real handy. This is probably one of my favorite options to use. It's quick, it's easy, it's not very big to store and it's accurate. The ability to micro adjust on the fence is really nice plus the stop that you can throw down for repeated cuts is just an added bonus. Now let's talk about the last option that is really fun to build and that is your homemade table saw sled. Now there's a lot of different videos on out there on how to get it exactly honed in perfectly so I'm not going to go over that. There's a five point method that you can use that a lot of YouTubers have done videos on or however you want to do it. My sled is a very simple sled. I use some Rockler miter bars that you can buy and micro adjust with an Allen wrench to make sure they're tight and there's no wobble or no play in that miter slot. And then I also put some T-Track on the top end so I can actually clamp down my pieces. This comes in real handy so you can keep your hands completely away from the table saw and away from the blade. You just push the sled through and as you come back, it's, they stay exactly where you want them to. So I made this table saw sled about a year and a half ago. We threw it up on the table saw and did a test cut. And as I cut the piece of plywood, went through, cross cut it, used my square, lined it up, and it was perfectly square. Um, which makes me really happy since I made the table saw sled, right? Um, is, it is still accurate, is still fine, and it, it, it works the way it's supposed to. Now there are some limitations to this, right? One being that as you do multiple cuts, you get some sawdust built up on that sled. One thing that I would change to my fence that I didn't do, but I had a suggestion on Instagram, somebody said I should have put a chamfered edge on the bottom edge of my fence. Now, what that would allow to do is for that sawdust for a place to stay, um, as you're making repeated cuts, it doesn't build up on that edge and then you slide your piece up against it and then you actually have a gap. You don't want that gap because now you're throwing off your 90 degrees, you're throwing off your cross cut. So having a chamfered edge will actually give you that little bit of gap you need for sawdust to stay, to move around so you, your piece is actually completely against the fence the way it's supposed to be. Now the other limitation is you can't do a 45. Uh, the Rockler one is set up so the, the fence adjusts. Now this one, the fence can't adjust. I mean, I did use 
uh, some CA glue instead of wood glue. And I also screwed it in instead of the wood glue, which allows it for over time, if it does get tweaked off, if it does um, move around on me, I can actually unscrew this, I can hammer it off, readjust it, re-glue it, and re-screw it on. I don't need to do that now, it's been a year and a half, it's still accurate and it still does the job. Now one good feature is I put those T-tracks in so I can use some Rockler clamps, They're the self-adjusting clamps to hold my piece in and keep my hands away from the blade and not have to hold the piece down. Now one thing a lot of people do is they put a box on the back end of the table saw sled. Now what this will do is it'll be pretty much a sacrificial area that will make it so the blade actually doesn't come through the table saw. So if you are not thinking, you put your hand behind where the table saw blade's gonna be and you push it through, you could cut your fingers. Now that's something I can easily add. Now this table saw sled is huge. I made it way big. And the reason was I had a smaller one uh, before and I kept feeling like I just didn't have enough room. I tried to cross cut pieces that were just a little too wide. So I ended up going about 40 inches, by 28 inches and it is a massive sled. It is nice because it's accurate, it's big so I can cut a lot of different stock. The bad thing is, is that it's hard to store. So having a shop like mine, it's not an industrial shop, it's a garage shop. It does hinder me some on where I can store it and figure out and move it around. It is kind of a pain in the ass. But um, it is accurate, it is good, and it's fun to build, right? It's, it's something that you can actually build in your shop. It's a jig that you can be proud of and it can be accurate and can help you with all your other projects. So that's also really awesome. Now those are the five ways that I use to cross cut all my lumber. If you have any more, throw them down below. What's your suggestion? Do you use a circular saw? Do you use a track saw? Do you use any other method? Make sure that you shoot them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Let me know your thoughts or any questions that you have. I'd love to hear them. Make sure you check out molenthemaker.com for tutorials and plans and pretty much everything that I'm doing to the day to day. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, subscribe below. I appreciate it. Now get out there and build something.